Safety and the correct management of the drugs and medication that doctors and pharmacists provide for patients are a fundamental part of healthcare. New technology married to clear and accurate communications between people are key tools for training new pharmacists. There is no such thing as medicine totally without risk. What we're looking for are advocates really for patients, pe people who can help patients understand, yes there may be some risk with this, but there is enormous benefits. Keele University has a bright and modern school of pharmacy. They've got some new people in to help them teach their students. Steve and Shirley, the virtual patients. I'm currently taking Mylanta tablets and I think I take a pill called Zoton. <laughs> the virtual patient has been developed in-house by a team of software developers and animators. The idea is that students gain experience in effective communications and decision making in a repeatable and testable way. If you want a student to understand what it's like for a little old lady with dyspepsia, then you have to guarantee, firstly, that on a Wednesday afternoon at two o'clock when you're scheduling that, there will be a little old lady with dyspepsia on a hospital ward or in a community pharmacy somewhere. The second thing is standardising that experience for both the patient and the student. And the virtual patient plays well to a 21st century student brought up with immersive technologies. The kids we educate now are IT natives. They've been playing on their Xboxes and the PlayStation since they were five years old. A virtual environment is totally intuitive for them. They lose themselves in it very rapidly. What it does is it's populated by a model that uses the evidence base and combines that with responses that will be that can either take you down an appropriate or an inappropriate branch according to what you say to it. So you're mimicking a real life conversation. So we could say, uh, what seems to be the problem? Um, well, uh, <laughs> I've got diarrhea. So what we want to do now is know a little bit more about his diarrhea. So we could ask him, when did it start? Well, the symptoms came on overnight and I was up several times in the night. Now we, we, we can ask a whole series of open and closed questions. The interesting thing about the avatar, it doesn't guide you and it doesn't tell you if you get it wrong. And let's see what happens if you ask him an inappropriate question. So, you know, we could think that maybe he's uh, not so clever with his personal hygiene. What kind of question is that? I'm very hygienic. OK, so you can see he's programmed not just to deal with the factual stuff, but to have emotional responses to an inappropriate line of questioning. The other thing to me why I want to know is, is he taking any of the medication? I'm currently taking Mylanta tablets and I think I take a pill called Zoton. What we're going to do now is end the consultation. This is the point at which we think we've asked all the appropriate questions. We'll now find out from the avatar itself if we have or not. So we'll press on to end consultation. It was good you asked me if I was allergic to anything, if I had any other conditions. You shouldn't have recommended the antidiarrheal medicine without checking if I had to go to work. You've been great. I'll come again if I have any more problems. OK, so what we've had now is the direct feedback from the avatar telling us the good points and the bad points, classic educational style. If you look at the screen now, you can see what you've got is a transcript of the consultation. So this can be used as either a formative or a summative tool. In other words, you can keep going at it to practice to get it right, and then you want to get one that's an assessed exercise, you press it, and that gets exported to whoever's going to be ass assessing the thing. In some ways, it's an academic dream because it marks itself.